We provide leadership solutions for both profit and nonprofit organizations through coaching, teaching, and mentoring. What we want to do is provide you with the tools necessary to make your organization better. Whether that's developing you as a leader or developing your subordinates as a leader, I think that we can accomplish that if you check out our website at christianleadershippartners.org. There you'll find all the things that you need to make a difference in your organization as a leader. Now, hopefully, we also want to provide for you this tool, which is a a video session that helps you to understand what leadership is all about using the kings of Israel. We do this for three different reasons. The first reason is, is that the kings of Israel give us a great example of what good leadership looks like, and they also give us a good example of what bad leadership looks like. So if I know what good leadership is, then I can follow that example. If I know what bad leadership is, then I can follow that example, or stay away from that example. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're able to do that. The other thing that it does is it gives us a historical record of their planning, their preparation, their execution phases, and what the results of that was. So with these historical records, I can find out the tasks and the things that they did that they were successful at, and I can also find the things that they failed at as well. And if I can avoid those negative things and embrace those positive things, then I know that I can become a better leader through that process. The third thing that we want to do is we want to take a look at servant leadership. And what servant leadership does is it takes a look at the leadership of Jesus Christ, the one true king. And we've done that for the past four days, and today is day five. It's the final day of this free bonus track that we're providing for you. I encourage you to take a look at all the different things that we've done here. And I think that if you look in some of our videos from the past, if you haven't seen them, take a look. I think that it'll make a difference in your life. So this is what servant leadership is really all about and what we want to achieve. Servant leadership is a style based on the idea that leaders prioritize serving the greater good. Leaders with this style serve their team and organization first. They don't prioritize their own objectives. And employees in the servant leadership environment are more likely to feel that their voices are heard. So servant leadership is one of the more popular leadership theories that are out there right now. And if you can follow along in this process and become a servant leader, I think that you're gonna find that you'll be a lot more successful than those people that are trying to follow the Machiavellian style or don't have leadership style at all. And what we wanna do is we wanna encourage that and foster that through this teaching. So servant leadership has five different categories that we've concentrated on these past five days. Let's take a look at those. The first one is character. Character helps us to understand that I know that what I need to do is good, and if I have good character, then I know that my subordinates are also gonna develop good character, and I need to make sure that I'm developing that character as I go along. We also wanna take took a look at communication and how well we communicate not only with ourselves, but also with our team members and within the organization. How am I getting things up to the higher level? How am I getting things down to the lower level? We also looked at conceptual thinking, where we're thinking outside the box, where we're taking a concept and we're applying our thought process in a new and in improved way. We talked a lot about living things in the paradigm where we have a, the, we're living the triangle where our needs are at the bottom and the organization needs are at the top. And everything is supported based off of those things. And as the organization moves up, so do we. And if we, the organization moves left or right, we're moving along with it because we're a part of it, but we're supporting the organization itself. And we can do that through our conceptual thinking. Yesterday, we looked at our commitment to growth and what our attitude was in relationship to that. Today, what we want to take a look at is community. If I can build community within my team and with my organization, then I know that I'm going to be able to build a successful team because a community can do a lot more than just an individual can. And as leaders, that's our overall responsibility is to take the team with us wherever we're going. If I'm a leader and if I'm not taking the team with me, all I'm doing is going out and doing things on my own. I'm not really succeeding and I'm definitely not leading. So I've got to bring the organization with me and the best way to do that is to develop community. Let's see how Jesus Christ did this. So Matthew 22, 38 through 40 says, this is the first and greatest commandment and the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. The entire law is what the Bible is based on, and we can see that if I can follow along the principles of the Bible by simply loving the Lord my God with all my heart and loving others, then what I'm doing is I'm actually building community and I'm fulfilling the requirements of what the Bible has before me. Now, I know that I have to, for salvation, Jesus Christ makes that available for us, and we can tap into that. You're more than welcome to IM me, and I can tell you how you can 
have a personal relationship with God and with Jesus Christ. And that's also a part of building community also. Let's look at another concept that he used to bring people together and start having them work together as a community. So this is John 13, 34, and says, so now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. So what we're doing is, is we as leaders are loving our subordinates. Now, I'm not talking about falling in love and writing them gushy letters and all that other kind of stuff, but I do need to let them know that I care about them and their needs. If I'm caring for them and their needs, and if I know what their goals are and I'm helping them to achieve their goals, then me as a leader de are demonstrating my love to them. Well, what I want them to do is I want them to do the same thing with either their peers or their own subordinates. Because if they start doing that, then they're developing their own leadership needs and their own uh, leadership skills and attributes so that they can be that much more successful as well. And as they're successful, guess what's gonna happen within the organization? The organization will become that much more successful. Later on in the Gospel of John, we read John 15, 12, and 14. It says, this is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. So there's a couple of different things that we can look at if we unpack this verse completely. We see that, once again, Jesus Christ is reminding them that they need to love each other the same way that he's loved them. But he's also showing them that because he was willing to go and lay down his life for them, because he was willing to go out on a branch or stand up behind his subordinates, if they're doing the right thing, then we have to know that they're going to follow through in the processes that are important to them in their own lives and know that I am going to be behind them as they do this. I found that as I supported my, supported my subordinate leaders, they became much more successful because they did not need to go out and worry about other things, but they were becoming more and more like me. And in fact, I can look down at my subordinate leaders now. Most of them have gotten promoted way past beyond what I made in the Army because they were following the different principles that I had pro progressed and they were that much more successful as they put the things into practice, loving others the same way that I had loved them or caring for others as I had cared for them in this case. We also want them to make sure that if they're doing what I told them to do, then we know that they're gonna be successful. If they know that they have to follow the instructions that are given from higher, but that I still care for them, then they're gonna be that much more apt to follow along in that. So John 17, 21 tells us this, I pray that we will all be one just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe that you sent me. So this verse is a simple prayer that Jesus prayed that everyone would be a part of what, they, what he wanted them to be. He wanted them to all be one. I form my organization as one if I know that they see the same vision that I have, if they have the same goals that I have, if they have the same objectives that I have, that I know that we are becoming one, and that's how I build community. They have to want to be a part of the organization, and that's what community is really all about. So what we want to do is we want to ask ourselves two different questions, and these questions can be found throughout all our teachings, and every one of our teaching had, had different questions, and I encourage you to write these down because they'll make all the difference in your, in your life. So this is the first question that I'd like you to consider. What are some ways that you can build community within your organization? Now you can look up different ways, and I really do encourage you to research this. So look at some YouTube videos from John Maxwell or from other leaders that you respect, and I think that you'll find that there are lots of opportunities for you to be able to succeed in this area. The second question that I have for you is, in what ways is your organization and community now? How can you build on that? So if you've got a good, firm foundation, then you want to build on those things so that your organization can be that much more successful. Now, I encourage you to subscribe so you don't miss any more of our content that we put out there. Make sure that you hit the notification bell. Also, check out our website at christianleadershippartners.org. We have lots of tools there can, that can really make a difference within your organization and within your life. But in the meantime, be that leader that you always want.